All right, so get ready because today we are diving deep Excuse into me. the world of conformity. Ooh. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, this will be fun. Yeah, so we are going to be using um, Cindy Etienne Murphy's Understanding Conformity, the Ash Experiment, as our guide. Excellent source. Yeah, I think it's a really good one. So yeah. I'm excited to jump in. I am too. So to kind of set the stage for our listeners, have you ever imagined like being in a room uh -huh. with a bunch of strangers and like you're asked to do this really simple task? Okay. But everybody is giving the wrong answer. Well, like you know the right answer, but you know the right answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's obvious. Right. But everyone else is like, nope, this other one's right. Oh, that's got to be so uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's what. Like, do you stick to your guns or do you start doubting yourself? Yeah, exactly. Wow. And that's exactly what Solomon Ash was trying to figure out in this in this experiment. Interesting. So basically, he would have people, you know, look at different lines and yeah. they had to match the lines. And it was very obvious right. which line was, you know, the right answer, the matching line. Right. But everyone else in the room was in on the experiment and they were giving the wrong answer on purpose. Oh, wow. And so it's like, what do you do in that situation? Fascinating. Yeah. Oh. So like, who is the Solomon Ash guy? Yeah, so he was actually... Why was he so obsessed with this? Yeah, he was a psychologist. Okay. Um, and he was born in Poland, actually, okay. in 1907. And he immigrated to the U.S. when he was a teenager. Okay. Um, and so he really became like a, a leading figure in social psychology. Who was fascinated by yeah. how individuals like interacted in groups. Exactly, yeah. Like yeah. how do groups influence uh -huh. the individual and vice versa. That's really interesting, especially considering the time period he was in. Yeah. You know, like the 1950s. Right. So this was... The time of like a lot of societal pressure to conform. Yeah. So like post-World War II. Yeah. Anxieties. The Cold War is brewing. <laughs> and there's just this like kind of fear of, of totalitarian regimes. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see why he might be yeah. kind of preoccupied with this. It wasn't just an academic question. Yeah. This was tied into like big scary stuff happening in the world exactly and he even has this great quote where yeah. he says the individual may be swayed to conform to a group even against his own better judgment wow that's that's deep yeah and i think that's just so relevant to especially today everything well, that we see going on in yeah. the world so okay enough about the history lesson yeah. let's let's get into like the nitty-gritty of this experiment yes so how did he actually test this this conformity thing? Okay. I mean, how do you even go about doing that? Right. Like, how do you how do you test this? Yeah. Um. Well, so he was actually kind of sneaky about it. Okay. So he would have a group of people, like seven to nine. Okay. But only one was the actual participant. Oh. The yeah. The rest were actors. Yeah. What we call confederates. Oh wow. Instructed to give like predetermined answers. So the real participant thinks they're right or wrong. With other like real participants. Right, exactly. Puts it all in on it. Oh, that's gotta create some serious right. doubt yeah. in your mind. And so the task itself was like so simple. Okay. It was just matching lines. Okay. But the Confederates would like unanimously oh. choose the wrong one. Okay. And so it wasn't about being tricked, it was about how much like social pressure right could make someone question what they were seeing right with their own eyes yeah like with their yeah. own two eyes yeah it's like are you gonna believe everybody else or yeah. your own eyeballs exactly and it's and it's fascinating because like yeah 75 percent of people caved at least once was so they conformed at ball. least once yeah it's it's wild that is wild it makes you wonder if like going along with a group is just easier yeah than being right Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Especially in that situation. Yeah, wow. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. But, you know, not everybody just totally went along with the group. Right. Some people did resist. Yeah. Yeah, there were a few. But, yeah. Brave souls that, that stuck to their guns. Yeah. Even when everyone else was saying something uh, different. Yeah. And I think that brings up the question of, like, what makes some people yeah. more resistant uh -huh. to social pressure. Yeah, what makes them different. Than others. Yeah. And that's something that you know has been researched ever since yeah. like what is it about those people yeah. but i have a feeling ash didn't stop there 
Oh, you know, he didn't. Did he? No, he did not. He was probably like, okay, well, what if we change this? Right, yeah. Or change that. Yeah, he was a meticulous researcher. Yeah. Um, and so one thing he changed was the size of the group. Oh. And what he found was that, like, how many Confederates? Yeah, up to about three or four Confederates. Like, right. the pressure kept increasing. Mm. But after that, mm -hmm. adding more didn't really change things that much. So there's like a tipping point. Yeah, there's a tipping point where yeah. it just feels overwhelming. Yeah, like no matter how many... No matter how many people are disagreeing with you. Yeah, okay. It's, it's fascinating. So a small group... <sighs> can be just as powerful as a huge one. Yeah, it's 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 kind of comforting, actually. Yeah, a little bit. To know that, yeah. yeah. If you have just a couple of people backing you up, right. it can make a big difference. But he didn't stop there, did he? No. He also wanted to know what happened if... He did not. If the group wasn't completely unified. Right. What if what? What if? What if one of the actors actually gives the right answer? Oh, that's interesting. Does that change things? Yeah. And it totally changed the game. Really? When even one confederate mm -hmm. went against the grain. Uh-huh. Conformity dropped dramatically. Oh, wow. Imagine you're that lone participant. Right. And suddenly, <laughs> you're not the only one seeing things clearly. You have an ally. You have an ally, yeah. Okay, so it's like that one person. Ash said, the presence of a single dissenter okay. can liberate others to voice their own opinions. Oh, I love that quote. Isn't that a great quote? It really is, yeah. Yeah, it really speaks to the power. Do they feel empowered? Of even one dissenting voice. Yeah, because then it's like, okay, well, I'm not the only one who yeah. thinks this. Exactly, yeah. It's that validation. That validation. Yeah, that's amazing. It's really cool. Yeah, so I think that's a, a great kind of stopping point to for part one yeah for part one i think so um but we have so much more to get into with this this conformity so we're just scratching the surface yeah Your that's right i i just find it so fascinating me too me too but we'll be back in just a minute we to discuss more of this deep death yeah stay with us so we're back diving deeper into the ash experiment i'm still thinking about that 75 percent yeah like really, yeah, seventy-five yeah. percent of people just go along with the group. It's it's pretty wild, and you know, even when they know. Think about the time period when yeah. this was done. Yes, like they, a conformity could be oh, a different time, a matter of life or death. Yeah, very different stakes. Yeah, so it it makes you wonder uh -huh. how much those like larger societal fears yeah. seep into our our everyday choices right even the small ones even the small ones yeah it's like we're we're almost hardwired yeah. to want to belong to want to belong yeah even if it means like betraying our own judgment right exactly i think that's fascinating yeah um but you mentioned that ash he also played around with how hard the task was oh yeah he messed around with the difficulty did that affect anything big time when he made those lines just a teensy bit harder to match uh-huh conformity shot up oh it's like when we're when we're not sure okay we look to others for confirmation for confirmation even more okay it makes sense yeah right yeah we want to be right right and if we're not sure we're going to assume the group knows better so it's not just about like avoiding being awkward right it's also about seeking out information yeah seeking out information to to feel confident right okay that makes sense think about it like if you're new at something uh-huh you're gonna watch what other people do right you know you're gonna you're gonna see how they're how they're doing it yeah like take cues take cues yeah okay that's that's informational influence and in action okay that's how we learn but there is a flip side to that yeah the flip side is is that we can be led astray if if the group is wrong yeah especially if we're already feeling unsure especially if we're already feeling unsure yeah. okay so there's a difference between between seeking guidance right and and blindly following right yeah the herd yeah you don't want to just blindly follow yeah yeah you want to you want to be discerning right and and ash didn't he also test like he did whether people conformed more when they had to say their answers out loud you know what yeah. And surprise, surprise. I'm sure this is going to shock everybody. People were way more likely to conform. Okay. When they had to speak up publicly. Makes sense. It's like suddenly you're not just matching lines. Uh, you're performing for an audience. Like that added layer yeah. of, of pressure. Exactly. I mean, who wants to be the weirdo yeah. who rocks the boat? Right. Who's the odd one out? Even if they're right. Right. Even if you're secretly right. Yeah. You don't want to be that person. It all comes back to that need to be liked and accepted. Right, woven into us. But that that public versus private, yeah. I think that's huge. That's huge. 
it makes you think about like yeah how much we hold back uh, our I true know. opinions yeah just to avoid like rocking the boat just to keep the peace yeah yeah it's it's interesting so we've got this this mix yeah of wanting to be right right and wanting to be liked uh-huh and that pushes us towards conformity so towards conformity yeah but this was all back in the 50s yeah. like does this ash guy because he still matter still matter in in our TikTok world more than ever i'd say really think about it okay. social media is like a giant ash experiment oh. playing out in real time okay we are constantly bombarded uh. with what everyone else is doing thinking buying right it's hard not to compare ourselves yeah. and feel that pressure to fit in so we're all basically those those line matching participants yeah. just on a much grander scale exactly exactly okay but instead of lines yeah it's clothes opinions lifestyles you know we're all trying to figure out yeah the right answer based on what everyone else is doing it's like this ultimate echo chamber and the algorithms yeah they're like those confederates okay. just feeding us yeah more of what we already agree with making us feel like our bubble making us feel like our little bubble is the whole world yeah it's 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 kind of scary you're right when right. you think about it this stuff is still super relevant super relevant so if we're basically swimming in this sea of social influence yeah how do we avoid just how do we not just become becoming mindless followers right yeah that's the question that's the million dollar question i think we need to to dive into that a little bit more i think we should yeah okay so welcome back to this deep dive into conformity back at it i'm still kind of reeling from everything we've talked about so far yeah it's it's a lot it really is to take in like are we all just puppets to social pressure or or is there any hope for us yeah exactly well i i think it's important to remember that like okay he wasn't saying that conformity is always bad right like sometimes going along with the group uh-huh that's what keeps society running smoothly right like imagine if nobody followed traffic laws right exactly or like, or like waiting in line like yeah, imagine if everyone is just cut in line all the time yeah i mean there's there's got to be some some level of conformity for it. for things to work yeah it's all about finding that balance right and i'm not i'm not advocating for anarchy here no no anarchy but knowing how easily we can be swayed like right. even when the stakes are low yeah that's the thing it's just kind of unsettling even when it's just like matching lines yeah exactly so right. what can we actually do about it okay if we're aware of of this conformity effect first off like congratulations okay. on taking that first step uh-huh awareness like you know the game now that's half the battle okay but what else but beyond that i i think it's about strengthening your inner bs detector like question everything question everything okay just because something is popular uh-huh doesn't mean it's right or just because everyone's doing it right or just because everyone's doing it doesn't mean it's it's right for you it doesn't mean it's right for you okay like that's a big one so build that inner compass build that inner compass yeah figure out what your values are what are your values okay what do you believe in so you're not just like drifting along right so you're not just going with the flow with the current with whatever's trending yeah whatever's trending on TikTok. exactly and i think you know something else that can be really helpful yeah is is not being afraid to ask like why are we doing it this way yes ask why like sometimes just asking that question yeah. can can get people thinking it can shake things up a bit get people thinking more critically but that takes guts it does take guts it does what if you're the only one who sees things differently yeah what if you're what if you're the only one right it's it's so much easier it's easier to just go along you just go along with the crowd right but you know think back to the ash experiment okay even one dissenter yeah changed the whole dynamic right and you might be surprised right how many other people are how many other people thinking the same are thinking the same thing but are too afraid to say anything right your courage could be contagious i like that right yeah like don't underestimate don't underestimate the power the power of being that of being that lone voice yeah that that one voice that speaks up yeah but realistically yeah. not everybody's gonna be like oh rebel right. all the time yeah we can't all be rebels all the time so are there are there like subtler ways are there subtler ways to to kind of resist this conformity absolutely okay like surround yourself with people who challenge you okay 
people who aren't afraid to disagree. Okay, so like curate your social circle. Curate your social circle, yeah. Not just your Instagram feed. Not just your Instagram feed, exactly. Got it. Like diversity of thought is so key here. Yeah, if everyone in your circle is thinking the same way. Yeah, you're just going to be stuck in an echo chamber. It's like you need those friends. You get those friends. They'll call you out. Who call you out. When you're just blindly following. When you're just following the herd. Exactly. You need those people in your life. And you know, I I think it's really important to remember too that yeah. Ash's work like that wasn't the end of it. Oh, no, no, no. Like it inspired I've inspired so much research. Yeah, tons of research into into conformity. On conformity and obedience. And, and obedience. Like there's a whole field yeah. of social psychology dedicated to this stuff. So this is this deep dive is just the tip of the iceberg. It's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more. There's a whole ocean of knowledge out there. For anyone who wants to learn more. For anyone who wants to about this stuff. Go deeper. Yeah, and the more we learn about these social forces, mm -hmm. the better equipped we are to to navigate them. Right, consciously. Consciously, yeah. Yeah. It's like we're not just mindless robots right. following the crowd. We have the power to choose. We have the power to choose. Even if it's uncomfortable. Even if it's uncomfortable. I, I love that. Right. Yeah, that's that's a great takeaway. We always have a choice. Yeah, we always have a choice. So that's powering. I think that's a that's a great note to to wrap up on. I think so too. So, listeners, remember, conformity is powerful. It is powerful. But so is your ability to think for yourself. Don't be a sheep. Don't be a sheep. Be your own person. Be your own person. Think for yourself. And thanks for joining us on this, this fascinating journey into the world of conformity. Yes. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time on The Deep Dive.